Okay, so we should now be recording. This is session five of our Smoke and Snow game. In the last session, the player characters had managed to infiltrate the catacombs below the giant insect infested abbey of the Solaris Order. They found a wishing ring with one charge that they used to summon the immortal known as the Judge, who revealed some of the history of the world, including that the ancient Valconian mages caused the Ice Age deliberately to trap one of the children of the Smoking Mirror who was about to break free from beneath its prison in the Great Ice Sheets. They are currently searching for an ancient artifact belonging to the Solaris Order, which they've been told by Simon Graydon, a sort of junior member of the Order, although the Order is much reduced in modern day from its previous splendour, that this artifact is believed to be some kind of weapon and that it has a guardian and that the stone tablet which Leopold, our dwarven adventurer, had given to Graydon to sort of get his master to decipher it. He's bought the stone tablet back, given it back to Leopold, and told him that it's one of the seals that allows you to like pass this guardian. So this is our, our first time trying to use a Foundry VTT for the game. So if we stumble a little bit over things or we're a little bit slow on certain things, bear with us because this is our like, first time actually using this for a proper game okay guys so you can see on the map you're in the small stone temple room with the pillars six pillars in it one of in one of which you found the wishing ring that summoned the judge he has just dissipated having told you his story and he's obviously even though it was a, a bit of a an information drop I give you like the condensed version of it. So you've all been sit around for some time listening to the judge talking about the ancient history of the world. And as he disappears and you look around, you, you realise from the fact that your torches are starting to burn low that you must have been sat there for almost an hour listening to him talk. So your torches are now burning low. They will soon burn out, so you'll need to like light up a spare one if you've got one. If you're out of torches... Let me know. I've I, I, I had a lantern when I when I come down here, so um Indeed. I'm so you'll be fine a lantern while. burns for four hours. Four hours, yeah. Whereas a torch only burns for one. And as you will all be aware, a standard turn in a dungeon is approximately ten minutes. So six turns an hour basically. Okay, so you finished listening to the, the judge's tale. He has disappeared. It's pretty much over to you guys. And John, just to clarify, there's one door in here that we haven't opened yet, is there? That's correct, to the south. Okay. Uh, okay, so I guess do we want to go on and find this artifact? I'm 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 still um, I'm still recovering from all this information, uh, but uh, I guess we should press ahead. It's, there seems to be suddenly an unfolding of many options, but the door is the most pressing, I guess. And just to let you know, guys, if you need to like zoom in or out, if you've got like a mouse wheel, like scroll wheel, you can do use that if you want to scroll around the map if you hold down your right mouse button and move it around it will move the map around okay so i guess then i will come over and uh is there any keyholes in the door not as far as you can see it just looks like a a slightly decayed wooden door. Okay, so I will uh, try and open it if I can. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The door opens into a small stone chamber beyond. In the flickering light of your torch, it's about 15 foot by 10 and directly facing you is another door in a similar state of disrepair okay so i'll move forward into the room 
Is there anything interesting or exciting about the room? No, it, it looks as though it might have once been like a small sort of antechamber or entrance room, but there are no sort of interesting furnishings or anything in there at the moment. Okay, so I guess I will move forward and try and open the door in the south wall. Yep, go for it. Is everything quiet, John, as we're proceeding? I'm like listening for any weirdness. Okay. So I'll tell you what you can do, Leopold. Mm -hmm. If you if you go to your abilities tab on your character sheet there'll be a listen door option there if you click on that it should roll that for you mm. no good okay so as you're listening all you can hear is the echoing of your own and your companions footsteps on the stone cobbles okay as you open the door to the south Malcolm you can see in there what appears to be a large stone staircase in the centre of the room heading downwards. And at the far end of the room, on a raised dais, is a statue. It, well, a couple of statues. Uh, it's two figures. One of them appears to be, you suspect, maybe one of the Amazu. Uh, it's a, a human with very slightly pointed ears who has... Slightly elven features, but doesn't look like a full elf. In front of that figure kneels a second armoured warrior, sort of with a sword like that, and his head down. And the the mage in front of him is sort of holding his hands up like that, and the figure kneels in front of him. Okay. And based on the other kind of um, tapestries we've seen and stuff, do we think that this is one of the knights who lives in the Witch's Isle, or who... It, it's possible. Uh, it's also possible it could be one of the Solar Knights. Obviously, this is like an abbey belonging to the Solar Order. Okay, and then the Knights and the Witches' Isle are different to that, are they? They're believed to be members of the ancient Solar Order, although whether this is from the sort of the time period that sort of Cotominius with them, you're not sure. Okay. But it's it's quite possible it could be one of the Knights from the Witches' Isle. Okay. Um, so I would like to go up closer to ex examine it a little bit more. Yeah, no problems. Uh, okay. Uh, how big are the statues? The statues are just slightly bigger than sort of like actual size. Okay. So they're, they're not huge. Like I said, they're both sat on, they're both sort of standing on this slightly raised stone dais at the, the southern end of the room. The knight is obviously quite bulky because the statue's been carved as though he's wearing like full sort of plate armour, you know. The, the detail's quite good, although it has decayed slightly with time. Uh, you can see like a cloak, sort of heavy armour. Like I say, he's kneeling with a sword sort of planted on the ground. Okay. And this mage is wearing sort of obviously carved out of stone, but like flowing robes, and he's holding his hands up like that. Okay. Does, does the statue look contemporary with the rest of the uh, structure, John? Or is it maybe something that's been bought in from a, a previous Well, well I'll tell you what, why don't you roll me your detect construction tricks? Yes, I will. Dang. Okay, so you failed the roll, so that doesn't mean you find out nothing, because obviously you're a dwarf, you know about stone. It means you've not gained any sort of special insight to them. However, you can tell just by looking at it from the stone that's been used, the sort of the craftsmanship on it, that the two statues are obviously carved by the same person. They're made out of the same stone. They're roughly the same age. So they were probably sort of carved in like a wanna mm -hmm. as like a set. Yep. Is there okay. any like decoration on them? Any anything like um, do they have pendants or 
anything that might help us identify who who they are portraying. Okay, you don't see any pendants. However, I, since you're examining the statues anyway, as you're looking around and you're sort of looking at the the sort of the knight statue, you notice something quite interesting about like, the stone sword. And it is a stone sword. It's not like he's holding an actual weapon. It's part of the statue. But when you look at it, you see the sculptor has gone to great lengths to like carve like very, very faintly and very shallowly, almost like a network of like veins or sort of striations running through the blade of the sword. And instead of having the normal like cross pommel, the the pommel is sort of round and it's like a stylized like sun shape, with like the handle coming out of the top of it and the blade coming out of the bottom. You can also see as you're looking at it that a different type of stone has been used for the sword. It's a slight sort of a stone with like a slightly greenish tint to it. So they obviously carved the knight and then carved the sword separately and then they've sort of slotted them together. Uh, this might be the artifact that we're looking for. It's definitely not the droids we're looking for, but it could be the artifact. <clears throat> I'll um, be like raising my eyebrows and looking across at it. Uh, <clears throat> have a look at that. Have a little look closer there, Malcolm. See what, see what I see. See what I see. Uh, and if I touch the sword, can I? Does it come loose, or does it look like it might come loose? You think with sufficient force, the blade would certainly come loose. However, the sort of pommel is just like carved straight into the statue. Okay. And is it just a blade that's made from the different type of stone? That's correct, yeah. Okay. What do we know about the artifact that we're looking for? You know that it's supposed to be a weapon. It's supposed to be able to like lay the dead to rest. That's really all you know about it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What about Simon? He's um he's a bit more of a holy man type, isn't he? Well, yeah. I mean, you, you, what, what do you say to him? What are you asking him? Call him over, Graydon. Oh, uh, yes. Look at this. What do you make of it, sir? Look at this blade. This is this is clearly something. Okay, so Graydon notable wanders over and he says, uh, he says, well, yes, I, I I think this may be a uh, a representation of the artifact that we're, we're we're seeking down here. Although I don't think it's the artifact itself, um, but uh, yes, um, from from what little my master could tell me. It certainly looks like a, a depiction of it, and it, and it it would it would make sense after all the it, it was the knights who resided in this abbey who were the keepers of the weapon, uh, so it, it would make sense that they would depict it in such a way. So the, these these fellows are perhaps the the knights are representing the knights. Hmm. Can I have a little poke around this dais to see if there's any, um, you know, maybe see like, I'm wondering if, if in some way these statues, maybe like this weapon, this, this blade like moves or something to open a, potentially a secret door or something like that. Oh, that sounds okay. like a secret door roll to me. Yeah. Mm. okay you look at the sword and obviously you know that if it was assuming it's not magic if it was some sort of mechanism it would need like something linked to it probably like built into the rest of the statue that would trigger the secret door and looking around the statue you don't find anything that would suggest that's the case mm. now okay. why more 
as you're sort of stood there, sort of in the little ante chamber, you know, watching your friends uh, monkey around with this statue, you can just about make out from sort of up here. Yeah. A faint yellow glow coming through the open door. <clears throat> okay, uh, I I shall investigate indeed. Okay, no problems. I'm inching my what? If uh, I, I close the door in my face and then I open it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing about these old dungeons. You see, the doors are always swinging shut and sticking shut. <laughs> Okay, as you move up, you can see again the, the the small bit of the chamber you can see appears to be sort of bathed in this golden sort of amber light. Okay, if I peek around the corner, ooh. Okay. Okay, as you peer into the room, you see what appears to be one of the the fire beetles that you faced earlier the amber light is emanating from it and it's sort of making its way across the room so uh, so it's it's going somewhere it, it appears to be heading towards the chamber that you're in i'm going to make a roll to see if it sees you basically okay. Unless it gets a 1 on this D6, you're good, because you're only yeah. peeking around the corner. So it's not spotted you. It's sort of rooting around. It's taking its time. It's not just like charging towards where you are. It's It seems to be like perhaps hunting for like detritus. It's just sort of like mm -hmm. slowly working its way forward, like pr probing with its proboscis into like the gaps between the cobbles and um, around the mosaic and stuff like that. But it's slowly sort of making its way across the chamber towards the um, the chamber that you're in. So I will close the door. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, I will wait here. Um, okay, as you draw. close the door, there's just like the faintest little bit of the orange light coming out from the gap under the door, which is like a tiny little gap. But um, you don't hear the sound of it sort of like throwing itself against the door or anything since it didn't spot you. So it's just continuing its business sort of like rooting around in the chamber. All right, so I will, I'll, I'll get back into the little antechamber here and I'll, I'll lean over and it's like, Leo. There's, uh, there's a beetle back there. And I, I'll like point towards the the other room there. Uh, it's glowing and it's it looks like it's trying to find food to eat. And I close the door, so it's I guess it's in the chamber now. Okay, but it wasn't super aggressive. I guess it it was foraging. Mm. Well, good thinking. I'd have done exactly the same in your position. Just something to keep in mind for, for when we move around here. Uh, the beetles down here as well. Hmm. Okay. It, it seems <laughs> only like yesterday we were fighting them uh, above ground. Okay. Well, uh, we've got some stairs. Would you? Do you think we should explore further? I, I believe they go downwards. That's correct. I think we probably should look around. I think I think we're on the trail of this artifact. We found a f few clues now, and I okay. think we should ad adventure deeper into this place. C clues say go down? Well, not exactly, but we... Well, if you look at this statue, there's this. This we we've got an idea of what this artifact may look like. Mm -hmm. Simon seems to be in agreement. He seems okay. like a fairly sensible chap. Right. So, well, yeah. Um, as long as we don't make a lot of noise, uh, well. it should probably be okay going down, even if we don't check the whole area. No, I'm I'm keen to press on our. 
I'm, I'm, I'm much more comfortable underground as it goes anyway. Yeah, and, and time is also of the essence, right? So. Yeah, have you got plenty of them there, torches? A couple more. And uh, uh, yeah. let me let me check if I, I might have a lantern. Uh, yeah, I have a lantern as well. I have six torches, but I'm kind of sharing them with Simon, so not too long. Okay, right, so then. are you guys Let's planning on heading down the stairs? Yeah, I'll, I'll lead the way. Okay, well, right, let me just move everyone to the next map then. If anybody's got a problem with that, I'm lucky. Okay, so I'm just going to drop problem some of all. the... <laughs> no, you, you won't be able to see it because I've not put your own characters on there yet. Just let me do that. Oh, that's a funny... funny looking spot. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to open that door there because otherwise I'm going to have room to put Graydon on. This foundry is alright, isn't it? I'm quite impressed. Okay, I'm hoping you should all be able to see the map now. I'm still waiting for mine to load. Okay, no problems. I like this being able to zoom in and out with my wheel and move around with my button too. Yeah, it's quite handy. I was forever on roll. On roll twenty, I was forever screwing around with the the map. I was always losing myself. You know what I mean? And yeah, one of the handy things about um, Foundry is basically when I set up the map, I can set like the default position and zoom level of the map. Right. right. So like I know where it's going to sort of bring you out, uh... so you're not like appearing in some random place that I'm to find where you are. Yeah, because like you'd be on roll twenty, and someone go, "Can you see the map?" And you're like, mm, "Nope." No. And then you think, "Oh." It's up there in the top right hand corner or something and you're like nowhere near it, you know? That was a bummer. Okay, so can you all have you all got the map loaded? No, let me just try and refresh. Okay. I've got my brother's old monster um gaming piece piece. I think it's pretty it's, it's got some oomph. Right, tearing out. Okay, so as you head down the stairs in the flickering of your torch lights, you can see that the this level is of a similar stone construction to the rest. The cobbles are cracked with the passing of the ages and small sort of bits of like moss and lichen grow up between the cracks. Over to you guys. Now, what can we see in the room ahead of us? Is it just? It appears to just be a, an empty stone room. Would you like to go first, Leo? I shall. Okay. Hmm. As you move into the stone chamber, Leopold, you can see. Two archways, one to the north and one to the south. They don't. They look like they would have once had similar wooden doors to the the previous, but they no longer appear to be present. There's a sort of eerie quiet hanging over the the proceedings. However, as you start sort of heading towards the the southern archway, you can just about make out a very faint. Okay, I'll, I'll like message. signal to the party. I'll put my hand up, turn around and be, do the old like shh. Just signal down there that, well, that I can hear something. We'll have a few signals like, you know, point in and holding your ear if you can hear something and all that. Yeah, that's um, absolutely fine. And what I want to do, I want to try and get get some eyes around the corner here. So, um, how do I want to do this? I'll just no. I'm just gonna 
cautiously move down to the corner and like just peer around the just peer around okay as you peer around you can see that the the passage appears to take a dog leg and then head through another one of these archways and you can just about make out a dull amber glow beyond the archway do you have to like figure out all this light and stuff john or does it just do it no i have to um i basically i have to set the walls up and right. then once i've set the walls up i set your tokens to emit a certain amount of light and then it basically works out based on where the walls are and how much vision you've got what you yeah. can see so for you you get a lot even if you you emanate some light because you've got like lanterns and whatever but you've yeah. automatically got like a vision of like 60 feet anyway yeah even if you haven't got any light at all because of your dark vision ah okay right hmm as you reach the stairs and you start to fan out exploring the the chambers below your torches start to burn low do you, do you want to come over here fellas or anyone yeah, who's using certainly a, can anyone using a torch will need to replace it uh, elves can see in the dark as well mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah let me just sure. check whether I've set that up for you. I'm not sure if I have or not. Just give me a moment. Never really understood why elves can see in the dark. But they can. It's amazing how Gygax making like one decision like that for whatever reason now dictates the entire Right. concept of an elf as a character in class. You should now with this token yeah. have sixty feet of vision regardless of your your light source. Okay. So then I'll just give a torch to Simon and I'll just okay. go with it. Okay. His halfling stuff comes straight out of the Hobbit though when you and, and the Lord of the Rings, you know, in the chapter concerning Hobbits when when you read it, it's like, wow. All the, like, bonus on throne things. and Okay, Leopold, as you look into the chamber beyond, uh, you can see that in the floor of the chamber is a disc of gold carved to resemble the sun. And beyond it, you can see one of these giant fire bugs glowing <clears throat> with this amber orange light mm. again it just seems to be like foraging around the chamber you occasionally see like pull up a bit of like the moss etc between well, the uh, the cracks well i will just step back and talk to the chaps okay there's another bug um uh, how do you want to tackle this I can weigh in there and do why don't I um why don't you guys move back into the, the bigger chamber and I can shoot it and have it follow us in and then once it comes into the chamber we can surround it. Hmm, excellent. Sounds like a good plan. I will fall back and hang by the corner so that as it comes into the chamber I can whack it with my axe my axe okay. so Malcolm you step in and you can now see the beetles beyond this gold sun disc and you're going to shoot at it are you yes please okay go ahead make your attack roll something like that Uh, I'm guessing that's a miss. Yes, it is. So okay. you fire your longbow. However, the main point of it was trying to attract the creature's attention. 
and you've certainly done that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, as the as the arrow like <laughs> into the the stone wall next to it, you hear this buzzing like <laughs> intense, sort of intensify, and it starts moving towards you. Okay, I want to pull back into there. Okay. Okay. And if I'm correct, you guys are basically waiting for the beetles to like come to you. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, but I'd also like to shoot it a second time as it comes around this corner here. That's absolutely fine. Oh, okay. So take your shot. As it emerges and you line up your shot and loose your arrow, which unfortunately, because you're sort of like turning around and firing it, sails over the top of the creature. You can see there are actually another two of them in the corridor behind it, which obviously were in the corners of the chamber you didn't see, that are now sort of moving up. Now, what I'm gonna try and do, guys, uh, and this I've not done this before, so bear with me, is I'm actually gonna try and set up an encounter so if you look on the right, you know where you've got like the um, the dice and everything, and there's the icons at the top. There's like a fist icon. If you click on that, it will take you to like the encounter, and I'm going to try and add people into that, which I'm hoping I'll be able to do. So, dum, dum, dum. What does this do then, John? It basically just, like, just takes sets them care up of to... your initiative and all that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. No, just give me a second. You've used this before, um, Rob. Yeah, I've used it like twice, I think. Okay, um, cool. Right, let's see if I can add multiples on there. Yes, I can. <laughs> Splendid. Okay, so. I'm hoping if I click on this button, it'll roll the initiative for everybody. What do them little flags mean? Because I've got the same colour flag as them beetles. Yeah, that's a bit weird, that. You should be in the green one, I'm not sure why. I was thinking that might mean I was a baddie. Right, I'll tell you what. Oh, in a second. I'm seeing if I can cycle it manually. There we go. Right, let me re-roll the initiative then. There we go. Okay. So, so they're teams, yeah. Yeah, the, the yeah. Beatles will get to go first. However, since you guys knew they were coming and you're ready for them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle through. We're going to start the combat. Um, you guys will get to go first. I believe the reason Leopold's lined up last is because your weapon's like a heavy weapon. Or counts as a heavy weapon. What is it? I've got a minus 789. What the hell is that? <laughs> I'm not sure, well, actually. I pressed the rake of buttons that I shouldn't have pressed or something. I'm not entirely sure. I will try and no. work it out later. But uh... Okay, no worries. Yeah. Okay, so Malcolm, you're going first. Okay, I will try and shoot at them again. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. Ching. Okay, mm. so you have hit the first of the beetles, and you've done it to three hit points of damage. So I'll record that. Is that our hit points? I guess that's our hit points. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, although it's not actually changed it on here, so. Oh. Oh, no. all right, I see what's happening, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine's nine. Apologies, like I said, I'm still sort of figuring this yeah, out, mate. guys. It's pretty cool, though. I prefer this user interface. It's pretty nice. Okay, so... Uh, da -da -da -da. Six hit points. Six hit points, right, okay. So, knock that first one down. Three. 
Yeah, there we go. That's got it working. Okay, so, yeah, your arrow thunks into the first of these fire beetles, finding a chink in its armoured hide. There's a brief spray of ichor, and the buzzing sort of fluctuates for a few moments. It's still slowly sort of moving forward, though. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, Simon is going to troll with his wooden spear. Okay, go the for same it. one. Okay, so Simon's wooden spear thunks into the first of the beetles and it slumps, sort of like rolls over a little bit onto its side and the buzzing stops. Its wings stop vibrating and sort of fall flaccid by its side. Why more? I guess I will. I'll take a jaunt over there because they didn't okay. make it to the room. One thing as well you can also do if you measure out the distance while you've still got your left mouse button held down, if you tap your space bar, it'll move you to where you've measured to. Yeah, I was literally just about to ask. <laughs> so that, that was very fortunate. So uh, I will actually go there. So there's a beetle here, I think, yeah. in the nuclear glow. That's it. So I'll I'll give it a shot with a uh, with my bow. You guys probably can't see this really well because of the light, but the first one's been replaced by a little skull icon because yeah. it's been defeated. <laughs> yeah, I, I can I can see the eye sockets, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, so good. I, I didn't really consider that when I set up like an ambient glow on the tokens. That teach yeah. me. No, the ambient glow is really nice. Uh, yeah, it's quite cool. That very yeah. atmospheric. Okay, here goes. A doink. Oh, Ooh, nice. That, that's almost definitely going to be it. <laughs> almost definite isn't 100% though. <laughs> no, no, it is, it is a hit. <laughs> and you've done two damage to it. So I'll mark that. So, yeah, so you notch an arrow to your bow and fire it. It thunks into the beetle. And you, you see, sort of like, uh, again, a bit of this icker sort of spray out of it. Okay, so we move on to the Beatles. Okay, so this one's going to move in here and have a go at you. Since you're right next to the door, Leopold. You think you lost your love? I told her yesterday. Okay, it's 15 enough to hit you. I am armor class 11. No, that ain't right, is it? What the? I can't be 11. Are you, are you, are you using ascending, John? Yep. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, I'm 11. So 15 is... Uh, Okay, so you have taken six points of damage as this beetle bites into you. He loves me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And while you're putting that on your character sheet, I'll move the next well, beetle. Whilst I'm finding my character sheet. If you hover over the sixth and you click the blow on the hand side, if you oh, click on that, it will dock you the six points. Oh, wow. Jeez, wow. That's cool, isn't it? What, what was that you were saying, it? Rob? Sorry, if you look where the six is for the damage, if you hover over the six and move your thing to the right, there's like a little blood drop. Oh, yeah. 
as you click on that, pretty sure it ducks you the hit points. Oh, that's pretty cool. Bob's a super you, user, man. That's it's it. It's a super user. <laughs> okay, so we've got the the next beetle attacking Oh, my name Malcolm. changed. Why ain't it changed? On the um, on the combat tracker. Over over. What did you say, Rob? Hover over the number. So I've got nine six, hit points. Yeah. yeah, you see what it says, so the six the damage. Six that John rolled. Where's that? In the um in the right way in the sort of chat thing on the right. Oh right, okay, I'm not there yet. Okay. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you hover over the six, you'll see like a little teardrop appear. Oh yeah. Like and if you click on that, I think it deducts it from your your total. Okay. Let's see if it worked. If not, just change on your carriage sheet. We'll work it out okay. later. Yep. Yep. Okay, so the second beetle is going to try and bite into Malcolm. Yeah, that's okay. Here, so the beetle sort of propels itself forward, and you feel its mandibles latch onto you, causing you three hit points of damage. But now it's time for the man, the legend, Leopold Stavish. Okay, uh, I will move this out of my way. That one that's directly in front of me, blinding me with its radiance. Indeed, it is quite difficult to like actually see the the forms of these creatures. So obviously, when you look at them, it's like looking at a light bulb. You can make out like the shape moving. You can hear the buzzing and like the clattering of chitin, but actually, sort of making out any like details on them is quite difficult. Although you've seen dead ones before, so I will hit the one that sunk its mandibles into my leg. Yeah, go for it. It's clamped onto your leg. <laughs> That's the one I'm going to smash with the axe. Go for it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Don't bite me. Okay, so would you like to describe how you destroy this creature? Yeah, I think I think it was like it was always coming as it come at me. The the blow was already on its way, and it contacted with me, and then poof, I just like split through its carapace and, and 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 twisted my wrist at the last minute so that I didn't blunt my axe on the um, stone floor as I cut through. I just did did a bit of a some kind of lumberjack twist to save the blade. It, indeed, and as you as you bring your axe down and you twist it around, you basically sort of half flick this insect off your leg and as it sort of flies through the air, you bring the axe back down, sort of thunking through it and into one of the gaps in the flagstones. Mm. Nice. And I just like shortcut one in this in the air to one side. <laughs> okay. So, next combat round, Malcolm. Okay, so I'm going to pull out my sword and just try and cut this thing head off so that's the biting. Go for it. Um, so, uh, 12. Okay. I'm afraid that is not enough to hit it. Okay. And I'll delete okay. these ones that are dead, because, you know, they're dead. Okay, so Simon will try and attack as well. 
And yes, that's a miss. Really. It is indeed. Yeah. However, between the two of you, you've managed to force it off so it's no longer latched onto you, but you're not able to do it any damage. Why, Mar? All right. Uh, I'll put away the bow and I'll get out the so short sword and we're going in. Okay. Uh, I forget what was the ping. Sorry? Oh, oh you, just, you just hold down your left mouse button. Right, okay. So that one. Yep. There's only one left. Yep. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice from the glow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I see that. That's how they get the prey. You see, distraction tactics. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that most certainly is not uh, enough. <laughs> it, it most certainly is. I am distracted by the glow. Indeed. And as I say, it's actually quite difficult to look at these things because it's like staring at a bright lantern. So you sort of, you're basically just sort of going like, oh, I can see that hazy sort of like spot moving around in this bright light. And you're all, you, Graydon and uh, Malcolm, are sort of like flailing at this vague shape that you can only just make out through the light. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to stab the, the retina burn that I got from staring at the thing. It's not there anymore, but I, I see the figure, so. Uh. Indeed. Okay, so the beetle lash it, latches on to Graydon and sort of tears him down to the floor. He, he lets out a gurgled scream as this thing basically like launches itself in this blinding amber glow at his neck. You hear like the sickening crunch of the mandibles sink into his neck and there's this gurgled scream as he falls backwards like blood spraying out of his neck as though one of his like arteries has been severed he like falls to the floor and he's like thrashing around a little bit uh, with his beetle on top of him oh well we hardly knew you Simon Leopold muted Leopold. I stalk up behind this one and take a big old swing see if I can cleave it in two. Go for it. Lip. Oh. <laughs> 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 that was a bit of a contrast in approaches. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you do manage to score a glancing blow on the creature though. And you're rewarded by seeing like a few bits of its chitin. And there's an armor sort of carved away from it. Okay, that'll have to do. Okay, so Malcolm. Okay, so I will once again swing with my scimitar. And miss again. Okay, so we skip over Graydon. Why not? I think I still see an image there, so <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're gonna try and stab at phantoms again. No, slightly better. Slightly better. Actually, okay. twice as good. <laughs> Okay, so it's the beetle. Um, since it doesn't have like a clear sort of preference for who it attacks, I'm just going to roll a d6. If I get a 1 to 2, it's Malcolm. 3 to 4, it's Weimar. 5 to 6, it's Leopold. Okay, so it's Malcolm. Uh, 
Okay, so it launches itself at you. However, you are able to fend it off. And it doesn't manage to get purchase on you. Leopold. What do you want to do? Hit it with the axe. Well, you've certainly hit it. Hey! Seven damage. Okay, describe to us how you take out this creature. Yeah, I think this time it just comes with a side swing and, and, and gets under, gets into the soft, like a sideways upward swing and gets into the underbelly of the thing and maybe like crunches into it and then like flicks it over onto its back and it just bleh, wriggles about a bit and then expires in a beady way. And as it expires, the light from the creature fades away. That was a terrible idea. Let's not do that again. Indeed not. Let's not. Um, However, there is a chamber to explore to the south now that is free of glowing beetles. Mm. <clears throat> I say, let's sally forth. Uh, and Simon's dead there, John, yeah? Yeah, you, you go over and check him and you can see his eyes are rolled back in his head. His entire neck has been torn open, staining his vestments with blood and he is lying very still. A, a red pall spreading out around him, but seeping into the cracks of the cobbles. Damn, these humans are fragile. <laughs> What's um, wrong with them? So I'll just uh, uh, rustle through his gear to pick up anything that may be a value that we can give to his master to um, remember him by. Um, what do we want to do with the body? Because if we leave it here, it's just going to raise up at night. That's very true. How far away from nighttime army, John, do we have any idea? You're not really sure, to be honest, because obviously you've been underground for a fair amount of time. I'm assuming none of you have like a timepiece or anything on you. Well, only the fact that you've burnt down through two torches that would place us about two hours in. Yeah. So you think it's probably, give or take, it's probably sort of like mid-afternoon-ish. Mm. Okay. But that's not an exact measure because, nah. like you say, you're sort of having to like guesstimate it based, as Leopold rightly said, on the torches you've burned through. That is how us dwarven folk roll. That's how we roll. Okay. We two um, torches into this expedition. Mm. Two torches deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay well I suggest we leave his body here for the moment and yeah yeah we can decide what to do with him yeah we'll just put him over here in the corner yeah that's tidy like and then do you want to lead the way Leo till we see what's I can follow me as I fail to negotiate this labyrinth. Here we go. Yeah, you got to you got to be a little bit careful about how you move, haven't you? Otherwise, it tells you you've run into a wall. Ah. So the symbol. Yeah, as I described it previously. It's a disc of gold carved to resemble a sun that's been sort of set into the floor. Is it like real gold? Can we tell? It looks like it. And like Leopold looking at it as a dwarf, you're like, yeah, that's real gold. That's legit. Any moving, any things that look like they might move, like we could press down or twist around or... 
you have a look around and it doesn't look like it it literally just looks like they've carved out a space in the stone floor and they've like lowered this like golden sun into it because mm. the, the actual disc of gold is just like the central circle bit of the sun yeah hmm. um, does it look like it would pry out you think given a bit of time and enough strength you could probably pry it out yeah I mean gold's a fairly soft metal what do you think, Leo? Do we think that this might be valuable? Well, do we want to go desecrating this place? I don't know. Gold is gold, right? Gold is gold. Gold is gold. Don't tempt me. Don't we got tempt, to eat. Don't tempt, tempt me, Mr. Hop. I, uh, I was trying to do the right thing. Yeah, right things overrated. <laughs> we have to eat. Um, Very true. I will take the the spear that uh, Simon threw at the. People. I'll be like, I'll be like, as you mm -hmm. go to get a spear, I look, just grab you by the arm and go. No, no, and I just hand you the pick. <laughs> That's what you want for prying out gold, my friend. I loan you the pick. Okay, so I'll use the pick. Be careful and... with it. That's been handed down through the generations. <laughs> I'll do my very best not to break it. Um, and I will use the pick to try and uh, pop out the metal circle. Looking at those biceps breaking, it won't be an issue. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Can you please make me a strength roll? So you should be able to click on where it says strength on your character sheet. Uh. Whoa! Whoa there! Is that good or bad? And um, it was, it was. Sorry, well, I was rolling really low when I needed high, and now that I need high, I'm rolling. Or low, okay, rolling now you low. need so high. You're high. That that doesn't mean that you failed to get it out because like, eventually, given enough time and you've got the right equipment, you will prize it out. It just means that it takes you a long time. So anyone who's using torches, you will need to replace them by the time you finish getting this gold disc out because it takes like all of you sort of working together to like prize it out. So if you're using torches you'll have to like bring out one of your spares. However Do you have any sense of how valuable this gold might be? Well you you're not sure. However Leopold Obviously, you're a dwarf. You're a bit sort of canny with the metals and stuff like that. Would you like me to appraise this? Yes, please. I, I, you're a dwarf. I'm not going to make you make a roll for it, Leopold. You reckon give or take, that's probably worth about 200 gold pieces. Yeah. Couple of hundred gold pieces there, lad. Give However, or take a few coppers. I, I will point out that it is extremely heavy because it's like a big old thing. So, like, whoever's carrying it, it's not going to be light, if you know what I mean. Right. I'll carry it in my backpack. Okay, so let me set that up. I've realised I was adjusting the wrong hit point total. You've got to adjust the big number and not the little number. And this is all revealed by hovering over the number I've discovered as well. It all comes up and tells you. Okay, so I'm just going to add that to your treasure inventory, Malcolm. Once I've corrected the ridiculous spelling mistake I put in the name. There we go. Okay, so that should now be on your carriage. Perfect. And yeah, like I say, it's a it's a heavy old load. Okay. Uh, okay, so 
Do we want to check out the northern corridor? Right. So you continue to walk through the stony labyrinth beneath the abbey. To the east of you in the chamber you find yourself, Weimar, you can see a, a wooden door to the east and to the north is what appears to be a set of sort of rusted metal bars sort of set into an archway. However, they don't impede your vision. You can see through them, and beyond them, you can see the passage heads both to the the east and to the north, where there is another door. Do these bars look like the previous bars we've seen as well? Yeah, they're pretty similar. Okay. Uh, what's the condition on the bars? They're they're pretty rusty. They don't look like they're in particularly good condition. Grab one. Try and see if it's any kind of loose. Like, can you okay, punch you it up? You grab it and you can... You, it's not loose, like you can just pull it out, but it does like wobble slightly in its yeah. fixings. Yeah. Okay, Malcolm, maybe try the door. Okay. So I will come across and try and open the door. Okay. Okay. Uh, is this corridor just kind of the same? Yeah, it's the same stone construction as the rest of this level. Okay. 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 So I'll call out to Weimar that some interesting choices to be made here. So what does the door to the south look like, or is that a door or a? It's a it's a doorway, but there's no door in it. Okay. You can see it's there's like the the cracked, sort of rotted remnants of a what was once a wooden door, but there's only like a few bits of wood left, and there's the rest of it's lying on the floor. You can mm -hmm. see beyond it there just appears to be an empty stone chamber. Okay. So I'll just say, hang on here, guys, while I go and examine this chamber to the south. Right. And I will move down to here. And okay. I step in. What can I see in the chamber? You can see what appeared to be a, a couple of patches of a lichen or moss and the the floor appears to have degraded quite badly in here there's cracks running from the walls and across the flagstones and like i said there's a couple of big patches of this sort of moss or lichen that's growing okay and does the moss or lichen look like natural moss or is it it, it appears so from like a, a quick sort of inspection okay Okay, now what I think that the moss or lichen has like kind of healing properties or is it just like standard moss? Roll right. me a d6. You think it's just standard moss. Okay. Okay, so I will head back up to the guys. Say so there's nothing down there except a bit of moss. 
a lot of floor is is in worse condition than most of the rest of it. Um, and then I will head up to the next crossroads and see what I can see. Okay. So on the west side is more bars. East side, is there more bars as well on the east side, John? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And then north of me, there's another door. So let me just try and open this door. Oh. Okay, so you open the door and in this stone chamber at the northern edge of it is another one of these raised stone dais and on top of it appears to be a stone sarcophagus. Okay, can I see anything on the walls or the floor? Not that you can see. Okay. Just Okay. 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 As you look through the two doorways on either side, you can see in the western chamber there is what appears to be a a large hole in the floor as they part of the floor as given way. You can see the supports below it, and to the left, sorry, to the um, the right, to the east is what appears to be a, another stone chamber with a large stone chest in it. And standing in front of it is this huge human figure that appears to be made entirely of bronze. Okay. I think we found our guardian, Leo. I think you might be right. Does he look unimpressed at our arrival? He's stood there, facing away from the chest, towards the doorway to the chamber that he's in. He doesn't appear to be moving. Obviously, it's just like a, a plain bronze face. There's no expression on it. Right. It, it doesn't appear to be moving. You can actually see there's like bits of moss have like grown over the of the statue. My guess is, whilst we don't enter that room, we might be okay. He, he, he hasn't noticed us. Maybe if we got closer, he m might okay. um, react. But we do believe that your tablet will protect you from him. And allow you to open the chest and retrieve the artifact. Mm. Your human memory has exceeded my dwarven recollections. Is that right? <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> did our wish reveal that information? <laughs> did, did the wish reveal what information, sorry? That this tablet that I'm carrying will protect me from this bronze dude. You were told by Graydon that his master had translated some of the runes on the tablet and it was believed to be one of the seals that would allow someone to bypass the guardian Ooh. however they did that it didn't like give an instruction manual that's pretty much all it said so oh. although you know it it should allow you to bypass the guardian if graydon and his master were correct it's not like they've told you what to do with it or anything mr harp you have uncanny um, powers of recollection I know. I believe I have just a thing for this. I will... Um, perhaps I shall bust out the um, the tablet. Yeah, you hold, hold it out of your pack. And hold it aloft. Okay. You, you're stood in this chamber with the sarcophagus. You hold the tablet aloft. Nothing seems to happen. No. I am... I am on croup to here and I'm going to stand at this doorway and um, survey the scene 
and okay. yeah so as i described previously yeah. it's a small stone chamber there's this stone chest that you can just see like because obviously this this bronze figure's quite tall you can see like through his legs there's this stone chest behind him and he's just sort of stood there like facing directly at you but hasn't like moved or reacted in any way as I cast my eyes around, does it look like there's any sort of place where I... Is there like a little nook or um, place where you might obviously place, you know, like a pedestal or some sort of um, place where you might put this tablet? Okay, you look around the room, you don't see any obvious sort of like socket to put yeah. the, um, the stone tablet in. No, okay. Then I'll just... Um, I will just advance, making it clear that I've got this thing, holding it up, and I'm keeping my eyes f fixed on the bronze guardian, okay. shall we say. As and you will, move, as you yep. move into the doorway, yep. there's a loud, like, <laughs> on what appears to be steam emanates from the joints of yep. this creature and it begins walking towards you and in a loud sort of booming voice that appears to come from within its head but its mouth doesn't move it's an implas a placid implacable mask of bronze this creature in a loud voice intones i am bound here to ensure that none may steal the treasures of this place all those who seek to defile this sacred place will be destroyed leave now if you value your existence mm. that's not and it takes like a slow step forward like a <coughs> I, I bear the tablet stand down I bear the tablet <laughs> okay okay <laughs> It steps right up to you and it's towering over you. It looks down, like its, it's whole sort of upper body cranes down towards you. And it says, at long last, my duty is fulfilled. And then it begins to like shake and like it just starts to fall apart. Oh, wow. Like pieces just start to fall off it. And within like a, like a minute, you're just stood with this like pile of rubble, like bronze rubble, pretty much. Well, that that went rather well. Good grief. <laughs> well, then I shall s neatly step across said debris and uh, have a look at w what we got beyond in this chest. Call out to the chaps. They probably hear my obvious delight. Yeah, and you guys will have heard the, the booming voice, obviously. Mm. Yeah. So, as I step in there, uh, John, I would like to fish the mask out of the pile of rubble. Okay, no problems. I'll make a note of that. I'll make an item later and add it to your character sheet. But yep. you now have this bronze mask. You know the old um, like death masks of saints, these very serene... Yeah, almost like two perfect faces. That's what it yeah. looks like. Statue, just statuesque. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll tuck that away in the old backpack. Okay, no problems. I'll have that to your courage sheet later. Okay, so Leopold, you head over to this stone chest. You can see what appears to be a large lock on the front of it. Is there any sort of um, key or anything like that on this bronze dude? Anything? You po you poke through the through the wreckage of the the once guardian of the creature. You don't see any obvious key. I wonder if it's in the sarcophagus. Mm. Yeah, it might be. Trick no, you might these Valerian knights. Yep, yeah, try try these, and I'll I'll hand to Leopold the two keys that I got from the Sun Temple. 
Oh, two okay. Iron keys. Ah. I don't know if it fits, but. Yeah, yeah well, it's moment. certainly worth a try. I'll um, head up to the chest with these keys. I'll have a little look around this chest. Okay. Are you looking for anything in particular, or? No, I'm giving it. I'm giving it one of them knowing taps. Kind of. Okay, make me a find trap roll. Okay. Ah, oh, clearly no traps here. Yeah, it looks fun. It's marvellous. Okay, then I will <clears throat> put the old key in there. You, but, put the, but, you put the key in. Being a wily old dwarf, I will go around the back of the chest and I will reach over and put the key in. Nice. Like, yeah. I will step the fuck aside as I see this. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> no problems. So you put the key in the lock, you... You open it, so you're sort of like stood behind it against the wall. Yeah, and I'm like, open it, facing yeah. away from you, very wise. Yeah. And as you do so, you hear a, a sort of grinding noise, and then like a bang. And when you open the chest, you can see in the lid, it looks as though there's some sort of mechanism designed to launch a dart at whoever was opening it. But it's so old that like the mechanism is just like rusted away, nah. and you can. Then <laughs> as you open it, basically this dart just like goes and just drop drops onto the floor, like it, in the Iron Man film, that little missile that drops out and plops in the. Yeah, <laughs> you 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 look at the dart and it looks as though it might once have had some sort of poison on it, but obviously mm. it's dried up eons ago. So you think even if you'd have set the trap off, you'd have like got a bit of a nasty scratch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah, just this dart falls to the floor, and you're like, "Well, maybe I'll keep the dart." But when you look at it, it's just like rusted almost to like nothing. Uh, I mock mock the craftsmanship that created this rusty ass trap. If this had been of dwarven construction, this would have been lethal to this day. Oh, so <laughs> they don't make them like they used to. They don't. They don't know how to protect their treasures. Oh, I'll show you a trap. <laughs> right, let's let's have a rummage in this chest. Okay. <laughs> we would indeed have tetanus at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you open the you like finish opening up the lid once you made sure there's like no other traps in it. And inside you see a small mountain of silver and gold pieces. There are also some like bits of uh, jewellery in there as well. However, your eyes are drawn to the large sword lying across the top of the pile. And as you look at it, you see it's a, a beautifully crafted ancient weapon. The blade appears to be made of some kind of impossibly sharp, dark cyan stone rippled with lighter veins of the same colour rather than metal. The guard of the sword is fashioned into a stylized representation of a sunburst. As portrayed in the statue above. Indeed. Hmm. Well, gentlemen, I believe we have found what we saw. This will be that artifact. Sun sword. As you're saying that, you're sort of like casting an appraising eye over the the rest of the the equipment and the like the jewelry and the coins that's in there. You see, there's about nine hundred silver pieces in there, or with like this moon engraving sort of like stamped onto them. There is a hundred gold pieces which have a sun stamped onto them. And there's five pieces of extremely fine jewellery as well. Is it, this is all well old stuff, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well. Do we have any idea the value of the pieces? I've posted it in the Zoom chat. Oh, excellent. 
Oof. Now, that's just like the standard, like there's 900 silver pieces, it's worth 900 silver pieces. Like, if you could, f there's not really like any sort of ancient coin collectors as far as you're aware in like Valconan, but you're pretty sure like if you could get them to someone who like values ancient antiques, you could probably get more mm. than just like the sort of metal value, basically. Metal but, value, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are they in good shape? Then they look like. Yeah, I mean, they. You would guess fresh. with with your sort of like dwarven knowledge that they've obviously been sealed in this stone chest, which was pretty much airtight. So mm. they're they're in pretty good nick, all things considering. Mm. But one thing you do notice is in the flickering light of a Weimar's torch, the light seems to catch the strange stone that makes up the blade of the sun sword. And the, the veins that sort of like the traceries that run through the blade seem to catch and hold the light. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna reach in there and pick it up and take a closer look at this thing. Okay. Not a problem. You reach in there and pick it up. Just to check, uh Leopold, what alignment are you? Are you lawful, neutral, chaotic? Uh I feel I feel like I never chose. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, that's accurate. Neutral. Okay. So, as you pick... He's a practical the, kind of guy. As you pick the sword up, you are racked with pain and Ooh. you take six hit points of damage. He's... He's... He fucked him up! <laughs> 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 oh, he just goes uh, uh, and drops <laughs> like a fool. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I'm like not. I don't know. Is there minuses in this game? <laughs> yeah, you you can go to minus your level. However, I will point out this. Um, this is this is effectively subdual damage, so oh, right. it won't actually kill you. If you take oh. them to zero or less, it'll just like yeah, render yeah, you unconscious. So, I'm definitely zero or less, man. <laughs> so I'll, I'm, uh, I'm like in the cartoons where the guy turns into like a skeleton, and you see that like yeah. X-ray. In, <laughs> in fact, what happens is you see, <laughs> you see Leopold reach in and he like lifts out this sword. Oh, that's this, nice. <laughs> this sort of like golden radiance, this warming radiance, seems to emanate from it, and then this light turns like a ruddy red colour and you, you see him almost like he's being electrocuted as he's like holding on to it and he his eyes roll back into his head as he stands up and then the sword falls out of his hand and clatters to the floor and he just keels over backwards a few wisps of smoke emerging from him so I'll, I'll lean Fighters over the lost I'll, I'll lean over and uh, start rob his empty start, his pockets no start shaking it's like Leo. <laughs> okay, you can see that like he's still alive, like his chest is rising and falling, but you can see where his hand was gripping the the, yeah. the sort of haft of the sword. There's like a scorch mark on his hand. Like, a few a few minutes later, you wake up with one hit point, Leopold. Okay, so I'll take uh, like a scarf. No, like, because um, uh, we take care of our weapons here. So I'll take one of my um, sort of weapon maintenance rags. Mm -hmm. Wrap that around my hand. Okay. Pick up the, the sword by the hilt. Okay, what alignment are you? Lawful. Okay, you, you wrap it up, pick up the sword. There's this brief burst of golden light, and then it fades away. You are unharmed. Yeah, so I'll be holding it with the ice pick grip. Literally, it's just like lifting it up and seeing like, is it gonna blow me up? Mm. And uh, like as the sword like dangles from my hand and it doesn't. Don't touch it! Don't touch it! Do you any harm? Yeah, I, I'm I'm staring at Malcolm and, and Leopold with my uh, brows raised. And like, any minute now. It's <laughs> okay, <laughs> why more? Okay, what's the total of your strength and wisdom added together? It's probably like minus two. 
Um, <laughs> no, no, your actual scores, not like your modifiers. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's not minus two. <laughs> uh, uh, strength oh, and wisdom. Is I it? am the anti-wisdom. Yeah. Uh, strength and wisdom. Yeah. Seventeen. Okay. And are you on less than full hit, less than half hit points? I. Uh, okay. So there's a. I'm at full. Okay, no problems. So, as you sort of lift the sword, you turn around, sort of like waiting yeah, for like like the shoot to like, drop. Yeah. Hey guys. N nothing think... seems to happen. <laughs> then, after a few moments, Weimar, in like a voice that's entirely not his own, and Weimar, you can hear yourself saying this, although yeah. you're not saying it. You hear Weimar go, "Ah, at last, I am free again." Holy shit! That wasn't me. Um... He says, and then then his then his <laughs> Weimar again in this strange voice says, "No, of course it wasn't. Twas I." Who are you? I'm I'm gonna put <laughs> my, my so, other hand. So he, you he puts, his hand, he puts his hand over his mouth and you hear this voice go. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I, I do because I listen to John's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I don't pay more attention because he goes, "Oh yeah," so he's doing this podcast and he goes, "Oh yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that," and then I think, "Oh yeah, that's a good idea," and then he always goes, "Yeah, I'll probably put that in my, one of my next adventures or in my campaign," and I think, "Oh yeah, that's a good idea," totally forgetting that. Yeah, that's that's this, the campaign, that campaign I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. so I'll, I'll I'll get the the hand off. I was like, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> and then, and then the, then the the other voice again. Weimar's like mouth's moving and the voice is coming out, and it says, "Now let us begin to our quest to lay down these foul abominations." Uh, might we ask your name? I am the Sword of the Sun. Ah. And I am oh, ready to shed my light on this dark and dismal world. This is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it coming out of is it coming out of Weimar's mouth, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he's just literally using my mouth to speak. But with with the with a different voice yeah. with the accent yeah with the um monty python voice <laughs> <laughs> run away <laughs> oh. Oh, so wow. I'll, I'll and you're talking in between when it's yeah, not I'll, talking you're like, filling I'm, yeah I'm, I'm like jumping in between like <laughs> <gasps> <laughs> yeah, and it's like when it's talking like one more, you can like feel your mouth moving. You can feel like the words coming out, yeah. like you're speaking, Charlie. but you're not trying to speak. Yeah. What happens if he tries to speak at the same time? Does it like stop him? If if you, do you want to have tried that, Weimar? Uh, it, it, it will not occur to Weimar. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, so I'll I'll switch my grip on the sword and sort of like. Move it around a bit. Like... You move it around, and again, Weimar in this strange voice goes, Yes, that's the spirit. Now let us begin our noble quest to cleanse this world of darkness. It's really strange. The sword is in my hand, but it's doing this. And it's it's not... It's only the voice. That's no uh, dwarven sword. Master Sword of the Sun. Yes! Um, <laughs> Fuck that sword. What know you of the smoking mirror? Ah, yes. The Lord of Chaos, my most implacable foe. Uh, I don't know who that is. Source of all that is evil and dark in this world. Tis my quest to bring swift justice to any of his creations. Now I do. I guess we all do. <laughs> uh, and Master Sword, are you one of the five? No, no. I am not one of the great immortals. Do you know their names? Why, yes, of course. 
Surely any person living knows the name of the five great immortals. Um, you have you have lain dormant for many years, and that knowledge has slipped from the world. Yeah, me. It's um, it's been quite a long time, and we just recently found out about this. Oh, I see. It, it has been an age. Well, I cannot say I am aware of how much time has passed. After all, I've been locked within a box. May I ask, who, who wielded you prior to this discovery today? Back, back in my time, it was considered a great honour to be the wielder of the Sword of the Sun. The, oh, yeah. the Knights of the Order, Solaris would hold contests and tests of valour to prove which amongst them was worthy to wield my might. Mm. And whoever did would bring glory to their order, striking a blow against the forces of darkness and chaos. Might we impose on you for the names of the five? Yes, if that is what you wish. There is the Judge, the Shining One, the Flayed God, the Great Serpent, and of course the Smoking Mirror. Do we know what happened to the Knights of Solaris? Well, you know that... that they, they got persecuted. Didn't yeah, they? you know certainly the ones that were on Witch Isle were sort of because they obviously they their sort of raison d'etre so to speak was like to protect the ancient mages they were like the warrior arm of them yeah and, yeah, and when and everyone started going oh the mages have brought back the new ice age it's their fault yeah. uh, you know that like they, they were heavily persecuted and obviously the the ones on witch isle were killed mm. definitely killed like mm, no doubt about it well your, your companions have seen their sort of undead forms lurking around, so it's a pretty safe bet they were killed. Right. Cool. The tapestry said they were burned alive. Indeed. And, 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 they, were and bl they were blinded so their spirits might never know rest because people blamed them so harshly. Because when, when people basically started going, like, oh, it's the mages' fault, the knights were like, hold up, we're here to protect these mages, step back. But there were only few of them. And there were more of everyone else, and in their blind panic, they were sort of overcome. Mm. Right. At which point, uh, again, uh, Weimar, in this strange voice, says, "And tell me, what manner of knight are you, sir?" And he, and he like looks down at himself. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, about that. <laughs> um, John, do you have? Uh, any kinds of idea for um, names of cities uh, back home? I, I haven't chosen any, so feel free to freestyle if you wish. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll pull up a generator. Uh, so okay. In just a moment. I'm just going to grab a drink, John. Yep. In a mo. Well, I'll tell you what. Whilst Johannes is looking yep. at the name, why don't we? Why don't we have our scheduled like ten minute break? Yep. Then we'll all come back and we'll crack on. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so back in town. Yep. So, you found the artifact then, Colin? <laughs> yeah, for better or for worse. What's that? 
I can't believe I fell into that, man. I even listened to that podcast the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need. To, oh, that's the second time. That's the second time you've done that. I feel like, I feel like you did that. The Cyclops in the Mist. That seemed like. That's basically a fog giant with one eye. <laughs> it, it, it's nowhere near as proficient as a fog giant. It's not going to be like dispersing itself in the mist or anything. It is just like a big cyclops that lives in a misty valley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could... But I don't <laughs> only just listen to that episode and I thought, no. <laughs> I've wandered in here. I've wandered in here like a mug. I should have t- I should have took the hint, and um, <laughs> I feel like there was something else recently as well. I can't remember what it was now. I like that needle blight episode. Oh, Tim Shorts, did you hear Tim's? Yes, episode? I did. Yeah, yeah. I-, I sent him a message. I was like, st- "Steal away, mate." I mean, that's the point of the monster episodes. You know, give people a few ideas. So I was like, "Let me know when your adventures are. I'd love to see what it's like." Yeah, man, he'd give you, like, at least three times he said, you know, he must have, he was a, he, he went to great lengths to <clears throat> credit you and Hannah for the idea, which I thought was very cool. Yeah, it was. It was very nice of him. Yeah. And like I said, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with it, man, because he's, like, I've, I've got his, um, I've got his zine, he did for Zine Quest, which I, yeah, I really got like. Yeah, yeah, he'd done a good job of that. Very, um, very professional old Tim oh yeah yeah with Ivy backing him up there she yeah. I think the pair of them work to get stuff done yeah they seem like a good team yeah. and it, it was really interesting on like the Gothridge Manor podcast like hearing him sort of talking about the process as they were like doing it you know yeah when I, he was I, often you back a kickstarter and like you just wait till it happens you don't really know what's going on apart from the odd update where it's because I was listening to his podcast you were like hearing them getting like, oh yeah, we've had these problems with the printer, oh, we're sorting this out, yeah. we'll staple this together. So it was nice to get like a little insight into like how they've gone about it. Yeah, it was it was good. <clears throat> I enjoyed I enjoyed it. I do like listening to the old podcast, I must say. It's it's weird. I was trying to explain to my father in law today the, the the weirdness of like listening to these folk um all over the world. And then you jump into a game, you're playing the game and like an hour and a half, two hours into the game, you're sitting there, maybe, you know, maybe somebody's doing something and it sort of goes through your mind, you think, I've never even spoken to this guy before. I'm sat here like maybe with like two or three players and they're they're podcasters and you think, actually, we've never actually conversed. Yeah. And it dawns on you all of a sudden. You think, "Oh, we've, I've jumped in this game. We've, we've we've had little or no introduction. We're halfway through an adventure, and then you realise that you've you've never spoken to them live. Yeah, yeah. You've just been leaving messages, or you've been listening to them, and you feel like you've you've got to know them to a certain extent. And yeah. that happened with um, with Andy when I was I played in this Cthulhu game and. For, hold on a minute, I've never actually... This is actually the first time I've um, spoken to him live. It was all... Because we, you know, we was having a little bit of a banter. I was winding him up and he was, you know, having a pop at me and stuff. <laughs> and and um, it was like you'd, you'd, you was old mates or something. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's it, it, it is odd, it is isn't it? Yeah, it is an odd thing. I mean, it's I've got cool. to admit, I'd lo- yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. I mean, I'd love to jump in more of the games that, like, the sort of Anchorites do. But for me, it's just, like, the time. The time no, you, you, you've you already got quite a... Um, well, my impression of it is you've got quite a, a schedule of gaming. Like, you, you, you've got, like, one Friday you've got this, and another Friday you've got another game, and then... Yeah, they've got Thursday's um, Johannes' Mummy game. And to be honest, the start of the week so just like a bit of a write-off for me with work. So you're still doing Band of Blades? Are you still? Oh, doing well, now we've finished that now. Oh, um, the the Mummy game is what we went on to after Band of Blades. Right. Although I've only just got round to like uploading like the final episodes today, just because it gets slipping my mind to do it. But is Hannah still running a Star Trek game? No, unfortunately, that's oh. had to, 
again just due to the scheduling thing yeah yeah that's yeah. had to take a bit of a break but i know she'd love to get back to it yeah she's doing like late shifts and stuff that messes yeah. it up that's it okay so you got your uh you got your name why not yeah so i'll put it in the zoom so okay. uh, i've called it k-stone and that is quite descriptive as it is a coastal place uh methinks on the southern continent and uh there are indeed coral reefs nearby nice uh which a, a key or, or a k is um like an elevation in a coral reef uh which like turns into kind of a sandy island Excellent. so it's, it's it's one of the i think like a merchant sort of city state on the on the coast there every day is a school day okay. yep so that's we all learned something today so today yeah. wasn't wasted indeed but, and i've added the bronze mask into your inventory right yep so um as as the the sword asks and like, oh, what, what kind of knight are you uh so why are looking at himself like so, uh well i was a uh, um uh, Mostly a bowman for the K-Stone regulars. Uh, we, uh, yeah. Um, Again, why my I, strange I, voice goes, K-Stone? Why, I've never even heard of the place. Uh, it's due south from here. A, a lot. <laughs> it's, um, it's a different continent. We... We traveled far to get here. Ah, I see. Uh, there was an age when you, you couldn't. Um, a, a terrible thing uh, happened, and all this land was embraced by a, an eternal winter uh, of some kind, uh, a terrific amount of ice. Well, I, I do not know of such things, but I know that there was there was talk of great unrest and the Order laid me here with a guardian to stand watch over me, fearing that unscrupulous people might try and use my power. Yeah, there, there's a lot of those people around still. Uh, they, they didn't get caught in the ice, uh, unfortunately. Uh... Then let us quest to dispatch the darkness that threatens this land. And as this voice is coming out of the Weimar's mouth, he goes like that and like lifts the sword up. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> Put it down, Weimar! The sword's possessed. He tried to kill me. He tried to kill me because I'm a dwarf. Again, this this strange voice coming from Weimar's mouth says, "'Tis not my fault if you are not worthy enough to wield the blade of the sun, sir." Not worthy? I'll give you worthy. Only the righteous and true of heart can wield me in glorious battle. Me and my brethren will have you reforged in, <laughs> in minutes. Your, your idle threats. At, at which point, as you're saying that, sort of, why my luck brings his hand around, sort of point, pointing the sword towards you, and he's like, I would like to see you try, you ragamuffin! 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 Audacity of this uh, thing! I, I do like muffins, he says, trying to de escalate. <laughs> Outrageous! And Outrageous. There's, a, there's an odd like juxtaposition. Why not the sword, there's an odd juxtaposition as like why am I like drops down into like a combat stance, but he's saying like, oh well I do like muffins. Well come at me, sir, if you dare. No, nah. we're we're not this this isn't that. This isn't the the holy quest uh, at all. <laughs> <laughs> It's there's plenty the of that to be done. Uh, that there are things that need to be put to direct, eternal rest. Uh, ah. Yeah, and if it weren't for me, you'd be resting eternally in that stone box. I'll have you know. Well, if there is if there is questing to be done, then I suppose I will, I will overlook the oafish behaviour of your diminutive manservant. Stand down, <laughs> Sunsword. That, that's that's not. 
We need to. Uh... <sighs> Fuck. Get a control of your sword there, Wymo. What's up with you? You need to grow some. Do you want to hold it? No! <laughs> <laughs> I've done that already! <laughs> that didn't work out so well. Yeah. So maybe I'll <laughs> figure out my own advice. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll give you it. I'll give you that. Oh. So we're going to need to have a chat uh, when we set down for camp. Uh, ah, strategizing. Wise, wise. Let's call it that. Yes, one must have a wise strategy to penetrate into the hearts of those dark evil doers. Well, I can't um, argue with that. I can't argue with that. Should we uh, leave this place now? <clears throat> yes, let us sally forth. Is there a possibility that uh, I might strategize the use of verbal commands for, for the foreseeable future? I say, looking at the sword. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not quite following you, old boy. Maybe I should do the talking. Oh, very well, <laughs> very well. <laughs> Grant, is there a scabbard, John? And uh, yes, there okay. is. There's a there's a leather scabbard, but it appears to like be quite untouched. Like I say, it's been in this air to like yeah. stone chest, so it's pretty good, Nick. And before we um, go, can I approach the sarcophagus and see what's written on it or what it's like or? You most certainly can. So, you approach the stone coffin. There's nothing written on it. It has like a large rectangular stone lid on top of it. You think you can probably just push the lid off without too much effort if that's what you want to do. Yeah, let me try that and see what's underneath. Okay, no problem. You push it open. And inside is what appears to be like a thick layer of dust and a small locked wooden box. Ooh. So I will pull out the box. Uh -huh. And then there was two keys, was there? There were. So I'll call out to uh, Leo and say, hey, give me that extra key. I found something here. And I'll be like, Whoosh. here you go. Be my guest. Um, <clears throat> and I will just try and open the chest. The key fits smoothly in. You turn it, there is a... <coughs> and the lid opens. It's only like a very small sort of chest, like that sort of size. Um, inside the, the locked box is what appears to be a folded piece of parchment. As you unfold it, you can see there is writing on it in an archaic form of the common tongue. And it reads as follows. I write this in the language of the slaves so that those who persecute my people would not understand it. Their fear of the dead should hold them fast. They call us devils and murderers because we brought the cold of winter everlasting to this land. One tribe already talks of abandoning our home to seek warmer lands to the south. Like ticks fleeing the carcass of a dead animal, they scramble to boats. Now they have cast my brethren to the ashes of the east wind. The judge will damn them for it after this life. Had they but known what we saw, they would thank us. Many of my own kind have set aside their knowledge and make for the ice flows, believing that if they lead a simple life, the fourfold gods will pardon them. The gods know what we did was right and necessary. The highest of the Senna, the Amazu, plan to depart from this world and preserve our knowledge safe from the fires of righteous fools. They offered me a place alongside them, but I will take refuge here amongst the fastness of the solar order. Our faithful warriors will protect me until my time comes. Okay. I wonder where the Amazon went with all that knowledge. It would be useful to know. Um. And of 
I've just made that visible to you guys in case you want to have a look at it. Okay. Um, so, can I ask the sword then <clears throat> uh, what he knows of the Senate and where they have gone? Yeah. What, how, what do you say to the, the sword slash Weimar? <laughs> so, uh, Master Sword, um, I seek knowledge of the Senate and where where they went and how they have protected their knowledge over the ages. Um, what know you of this? Uh, again, Weimar talking in this strange voice says, I cannot tell you exactly where they went. However, I did hear the things that the Order say, the... The Amazu created great vessels that they were going to use to depart this place for elsewhere to protect what they held dear. I believe as some of them who set aside their knowledge and broke their staffs moved south planning to make a new life for themselves. But those who cleaved to their old ways and power sought to depart from this place. To where? I know not. Mm. And what know you of the Lang? Are they a people you are familiar with? I, I'm sorry, I uh, that, that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, they are a small people with white hair who have been here for age upon age. And the folk who stayed, yeah? He says, well, uh, I, I don't know about these Leng that you talk about. Uh, I know there were, amongst the, the people of the Valconan, there were, there were races of people who were slightly smaller in stature and had, and had I suppose you might call it a fair hair. Hmm. What were they called in your talk? They, they were the Valconan, oh. as, as were all of the races that were united under the, the, the just rulership of the Amazu and the guidance of the Solar Order. It was a golden age. Oh, if you could have only seen it. Indeed. Who were the folks that made for the ice flows believe in, in the simple life? Who were those guys? The Ice Walker tribes, they're called, I think. The Ice Walker. <clears throat> I think we need to seek out them dudes. I think the Lang is where we go first because their leader remembers all of his predecessors' memories. Ah. Uh -huh. Or something to that effect. Uh, Master Sword. Yes. Um, the the children of the smoking mirror yes. live under the uh, under the, the melting ice caps. Um, so I'm led to believe. Yes, could they be defeated by you and us and and and, and men of our ilk, or are we? Do we need the Senna and the Am the Senna and the Amazu? Well, if if I am perfectly honest with you, sir, I I have never faced one of these uh, beasts in honourable combat. However, I would judge them to be potent indeed, given that the Amazu, at the height of their power, saw fit to conjure the ice sheets to ensure that they remained sealed away. Mm. And have you any idea how they perform such a feat? I am no I am no master of the arcane, sir, but I believe it took all of them in concert to working a great ritual. Hmm. But their their power was great in those days. Before they they realized uh, their error, they made the the climate of this land pleasant so that the land would give forth its bounty and that people would that the Valconan would benefit from that.
So this message talks about this guy who is protected here until his time comes. Who do we think resides here until their time comes? Is it... And it's, was there also a wizard burned in the tapestry that we've seen? No. And they say they've preserved their knowledge safe from the fires of the righteous fools. So this knowledge <clears throat> of the highest center, the Amazu, they've preserved their knowledge or they planned to depart and preserve their knowledge. So do we know if they actually managed to execute this plan? They were, they were, they were got at and persecuted, but did they manage to, I don't think we know that. I don't think we know if they succeeded in this preservation. Am I right there, John? That we, we're not sure. Yeah. So we, we could do with finding out whether they did preserve this knowledge because they're the they're the dudes that put the ice in place. Yeah. Basically, they saw what the threat was and rustled up rustled up the ice. Because they uh, bought, they bought the cold of winter. Their knowledge bought the cold of winter. We need to discover their knowledge so that we can preserve the cold of winter that's now subsiding, and because the ice is starting to melt and recede, we need to find out if they succeeded in in preserving the knowledge. The Amazu have got the answer because they're the people that saved saved everyone once. That's how Leopold sees it. Uh, <clears throat> Master Sword, um, how long did the Amazu live here? before they found the children of the smoking mirror as the ice receded? Oh, many generations. And what was the weather like during those generations? Was it always cold here? Well, before the uh, b before the, the, the workings of the Amazon, it, it was extremely cold. Uh, but they they worked their magics to make this land bountiful and pleasant for the the Valconan people to live in so that farming and such like was was easy for the people they they lived in great comfort for okay. such, such was the benefit of the the Amazon's wise and beneficent rule and then as the weather got better year on year yes the children got closer and closer to being released I know you where the child was seen. Well, I, I I can't say for certain. As I've said, I've never faced one of these beasts in combat, but uh, I would hazard a guess, and it is only a guess, mind you, that it would be towards the uh, the, the great glaciers. Assuming they are still about, uh, obviously, I don't know. I've been down here in that damn box. And remember you the year that you went into that box? He says, well, yes, of course. And he gives you a year, but he's obviously not using the same calendar as you guys. Okay. So it doesn't really mean anything to you. Okay. 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 So Malcolm thinks that we should speak to the Lang and see what they can tell us. Because if their memories do stretch back that far, 
they may be able to tell us if the Yamazoo did in fact leave, and if so, how and where they may possibly have gone. Where do you think this guy, though? I feel like there's some... the remains of someone. At which point, uh, Weimar again in the voice of the sword says, I, I assume you're referring to Brother Aurelius. I don't, I don't. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yes, he was, uh, he was one of the Valconan mages who, when the others were making their preparations depart, elected to remain here with the order. Uh, I don't know what happened to him. I was sealed away before then, but, uh, I know that he pledged to remain with the Order until his time came. Oh. And there was no mage bodies on the island, right? They were all knights. That's correct. Make me a, an it's intelligence down, check, yeah. please, uh, Malcolm. And this Oh this is such a waste of time. <laughs> uh... Oh. Oh success. <laughs> there, you go. there is a god. Okay. As you're sort of thinking about it, your mind flickers back to the the thick coating of dust that was in the sarcophagus. Or perhaps it was ash. Uh I was going to say, because there weren't no remains, was there? Oh. Yeah. You wouldn't have remains here, would you? That wouldn't go so well. No. So he may have been burnt as well, and laid to rest here. Yeah. No. Well, that makes sense. Hmm. So he... He took refuge here, refuge here amongst the fastness of the so orders. Yeah. Until his time comes. Seems like you might come back. Let us go and see what the master has to say. Right. Um, I'll get the scabbard. Mm -hmm. Put the sword in. I scoop all the coins and whatnot into my backpack. Yeah, not a problem. Do we want to have a look down? So there's a door to the south. Do we want to have a look down here? I think it's just a dead end. But looking at the the map. Yeah, in, in the interests of expediency, I'll tell you. You explore the corridor to the south. Um, it, it is pretty much a dead end and it's pretty much deserted down here. The only other thing you find of interest is like the big hole in the chamber to the west, which appears to drop down through the floor, like part of the floor's collapsed. Does it look like we could tra traverse to the floor below or is it just... It, it looks like you could go down through it, however how far down it goes, you're not sure. Okay. And we didn't what see any think? other stairs to get down either, so... What do you think, guys? Do you wish to explore deeper, or do you, would you prefer to retreat? I know your surface dwellers and the underdark is perhaps not your comfort zone. Qu quick, quick, we, uh... quick, quick question, uh, Leopold. Yeah. At the minute, what is your character thinking would be like the best course of action? Like, even if you've not said it, what's your character thinking? Um. Uh... What is my character thinking? 
There's a bunch of money. There's a bunch of loot going on. Um, I mean, he's, he's a prospect. So he, he come here to explore. He'd probably want to have a look down there. Well, actually, actually, he's took a thrashing. So his he's, um, immediate course of action would be to rest his ass up, get a few beers in. Get, get a few pork pies down him and um, yeah okay so why more as you're sort of like you're standing there thinking oh but the sword's not going to keep like chatting away like constantly as as you're sort of like looking around you, you, your gaze happens to fall on younger Mr. Leopold and um, although he's like not moving his mouth he's like looking thoughtful you hear like a sort of echoey version of his voice going like, oh, there, there might be treasures down that hole. We should probably... Sort of, no, I took a right thrashing from those beetles earlier on. <laughs> reckon, we ought, reckon we ought to get to the surface, you know, I can rest up, maybe maybe get some beer. Oh, I'll tell you what, I could go for a pork pie about <laughs> Yeah, could go for a pie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you... Oh, obviously, you're the only one who hears that, and you've mm -hmm. not actually spoken aloud, Leopold. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, how about this? I says we go back, we got the thing that we were coming here to look for, and we know there might be something more here, but this is the... And I, I look the the sword, and I, I look back slowly towards Malcolm and Leopold. This is the quest of the day complete uh, <laughs> and we might uh, return spend some time talk to the old master there maybe who knows maybe the sword and the master are going to have a wild time as you um, as you say oh this is the quest of the day you you get like a feeling of sort of like smug satisfaction <laughs> come over you that that like you're not fit. It seems to come from nowhere and then it just like disappears like quickly. But like the sword doesn't say anything. And, I, and, and I'll be like, oh, yes, yes. We've, it seems that we've completed our quest here. It would be advantageous to return to the surface. And um, yes, we should make good the body of our fallen comrades and speak to the master. Again, as Leopold says the word quest, again, you get this slightly smug feeling from the sword. <laughs> It's just rubbing my temple. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you What do you want to do with the body? I, I don't know that we have enough wood here to make a pyre. No, but we can bring his body to the forest nearby, right? And find right. enough. Right. Okay. So we'll just take. Yeah, we'll we'll make a. Right. Okay. Um, so I, I guess we're gonna proceed with that plan. Like get the body. Uh, Go up. I might have to. I might have to sink a few beers somewhere along the line, though. Mm. Yeah, maybe some pies as well. Ah, yeah, splendid idea. I wish I'd thought of that. Mm. Good suggestion, Weimar. You, yeah. you read my mind. Yeah, warm food. Huh? That's. Uh... Yes, That's I'd quite like to have a look down that hole, but it'll have to wait for another time. Mm. It's not going anywhere. The no. beetles ain't, ain't gonna. Void it up, so no, no. And anyway, we might it's one thing at a time, right? Uh, we've got the sword now. Maybe we can address the isle. We have to take our friend there. Maybe back to the fort. We go to the fort. There's people with titles in there. It's going to be involved. Let's say uh, once we get there. Mm. I, I think we probably look into all that and then then get back now that we actually have the sword okay so I'm going to move you guys back onto the main map and we'll, we'll assume that you've camped sort of like a bit of a distance away from the abbey so by the time you get out it'll be just sort of like getting to like nightfall so let me just move everyone to the map Let me 
so, you down one hex because you camped a bit away from the the abbey because obviously the surface is still infested with beetles. Yeah, yeah. No, we 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 will die if we. But <laughs> I, I'm that. assuming you guys are going to like just like sneak out the same way you came in. So I'm not yeah, going to make you like yeah. fight your way out of the the ground level of the abbey. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. Um. So I think if we are to uh, complete this quest, that we should potentially use some of this treasure that we have found to hire uh, uh, mercenaries and uh, companions, um, convert them to the the judge and following up the judge and join us on this crusade to so yeah let's talk about that uh and i think this is like a montage and yeah, that's uh, fine. in a in a in a tent environment in, like uh, as we're like having our little meals there and uh it's it's like over the night it's like so how exactly are we setting up this religion which we are putting effectively to crusade use from the day one and like how how is that gonna work out because we we're gonna need the trappings right we're gonna need people staff priests is, is this the same religion that nearly fried my ass that religion no, that's the sword no I think. that's the sword yeah, I feel like there's kind of like some links between that sword and this proposed religion of yours. Well, anyway, that fried my ass. Like whatever, it's it's not going to be the religion of fried dwarf ass, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, best not be. I'll have a few things to say about that. I can tell you. Yeah, it's it's whatever the sword is. That's that's beside the point. The point is, apparently, in the large scheme of things. The right thing to do is to kickstart this dusty code. <laughs> this this dusty veneration, which is something I don't I don't exactly have a lot of experience in. I, I don't know, Malcolm Leopold, how, how are are you much into the the whole Leander, the the shining one, stuff. I I have never been a religious man, but I am now truly converted to the yeah. judge and his. S well, so, suddenly, Wyvar like says, <laughs> who, the, "Who the bloody hell is this Leander fellow?" Leander is a, a a very popular priest. Oh. It strikes me that you two a couple of backwoodsman that didn't spend enough time in school a couple of dumb asses i mean how are you gonna start start up this religion exactly you can't even spell can you you can't even the i know one of the ways in which it starts i've seen it done by others ah. and we have all the implements here that are necessary for that but that's a dirty <clears throat> business and i don't know that we want to get into that I, I think we might. Uh, do we want to do that? I, and I, I guess I'll You've look got at nowhere Malcolm. near enough books. You need books for this. No, what you need is a sword. Oh. I... Mm. And yeah, uh, that turns pretty heated very quickly. And I didn't really. Well, I guess none of us signed up for any of this stuff. Uh, when we came up here, I, I was going to be a, a, a trapper, like learn trapping from Cameron, but Cameron's dead. We have a holy mission from ancient gods. This isn't really what I had in mind when I set up on on, the, uh, on this trip. It strikes me that you got a holy mission, mate. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I think. Since that sword started speaking through your mouth? Well, long before then. Well, not long before then, but before then. You know, this land... You know, we won't survive in this land if we don't deal with the evil that dwells beneath the ice. 
That's right. Well said, right. sir. Hey, you put down, swordy. Yeah, master sword. Yep. Leave us to our leave us to our strategizing, if you don't mind. Oh, very yeah. well. With, with utmost, <laughs> utmost respect for your 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 metalness. Um, <laughs> Respect for your metalness. <laughs> <laughs> we need um, to stop. What about this ice? We, we, if it, it strikes me, we just got to stop this ice from retreating. Find out, find out what these. these yeah, ancient... but then the land that you know we've come here to make our fortune, right? The land is a very little bit of the land is unfrozen. If we freeze the rest of the land, everyone who is here will die, and we will all have to go back to Rohalin. And there's a reason that we're not in Rohalin. So to me, what we need to do is bring everyone who is here together under a single banner and rid this, the world of the evil that lies beneath the ice. Uh -huh. um, the ravens of a lunatic! You want the ice to melt and you want to fight the stuff that's under the ice. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, that is, that is the task that we have been given. I say bring... Bring back the ancients with the knowledge to keep the ice where it is. Make do with the land that we've got. Keep these things frozen and pile on a bit of extra ice for good measure. That's what I say. Well, who knows what will happen if we actually manage to maybe set up a couple of shrines and there's yes. actually adherence. Like, who, who knows what happens uh, at that point? Well, yeah. And we'll just have to see because you've been lied be... to your whole life leo the true gods we have met one of the five true gods and it is time that we share that knowledge with more people praise gail spread <laughs> <laughs> and that we spread yeah. the word of the judge and his uh, companions um, and bring more people to the understanding that, you know, there is a darkness under the ice that must be battled. Yeah, but these 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 people these don't don't you care for for the you know, the wisdom of the ancients that saw fit to bring this ice? I mean the ancestors. You you got to respect your ancestors. I I I've been raised all my days. Uh, everything, uh, my whole, all my beliefs, uh, founded in respect for the ancestors and their wisdom. If if you throw aside the wisdom of the ancients, then you're stepping into the unknown. You don't. We the the ancestors know what lurks in the ice. We, we we don't know. They saw, we they they had the wisdom to to stop these creatures with the ice. We we should we should try and rediscover those secrets. Yes, and I I I don't disagree. But let us not forget that they forsook, forsaken, forsook. They were driven forsook, out. Yeah. They they were driven <laughs> out by the. They were driven no, but, out. But long before that, they had forsaken the gods. Mm. Um. You know, and they, you know, the people were forsaken, you know, and they have left. And, and, you know, they have knowledge that we may find or that we may need, certainly. They know more about the gods than we do. But, <clears throat> you know, I do not believe that as it stands that we can rely on them to save us. You as know. you're having this conversation obviously it's getting dark you're making your camp up while you're talking like you say sort of montage scene it's getting to the end of the day so you each need to eat a ration do we have those still Mark? yeah yeah, we've lost, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry I did, I did a foraging roll that I failed but we still have plenty yeah. um and obviously, obviously it's, it's as this conversation is going on it's getting quite late into mm -hmm. the evening, you're all obviously quite tired from your exertions. So, what I propose, it's going to be quite the thing uh, to set anything going up here, as we already know from New Zealand. It's going to take time, resources, we have some of that now, uh, 
the treasures we just un unearthed. It's it's going to carry some of uh, some of this plan, but I propose we go ahead see what the what the master can uh, maybe the master can help us with the with the aisle the more the immediate threat and then afterwards uh we um honestly it, it's not a conflict between do we set up a shrine or do we dig up the secrets of those who lived here once and brought the ice let's do both uh there's no reason not to and I don't know about you, but I'm just a bowman. Like I, I used to hunt for the regiment in the plains and set up fires. I am not exactly one to fight a blinded ghostly order of immortal knights from antiquity. That's exactly somewhat... exactly that... my point. You're a dumbass <laughs> bowman. Quite but right. We were chosen <laughs> by the George for that very purpose you found a ring you found a ring and asked a question chosen humbug humbug chosen, chosen. he chose to speak to us he suppose he chose to gift us with his knowledge i agree with weimar speak to the old man he has wisdom right wisdom we'll of that. the ancients we'll, we'll do that the first thing we get back right i don't that's, trust that's the one thing we, we can establish business. Yeah. Good. Speak. Okay. I'm going to try and probably have some sword dreams. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I, I turned <laughs> lay, lay to rest with the with the sword in the scabbard, by yep. the way, so I don't cut my bits off. The uh, OSR dreams weren't good enough. <laughs> Indeed. So you, you all settle down for the evening, taking your various watches, etc. And as you're on a as you're on watch, Leopold, you're taking the last watch. You find yourself sat there in the early light of the morning, you're sat on like a log or something, and you you're quite tired. Since you've all rested, you can all get one D three hit points back if you need to. But as you're sat there on this log, you find your head sort of like nodding with... Because obviously you, you did take a battering. You find your, your head sort of nodding and you're unable to help yourself but sort of nod off briefly and fall asleep on your watch, Leopold. Oh, that uh, went well last time. And as you all sleep, you all experience the same dream. In this dream, you are all stood on a small lush looking island heavy with greenery and growth a mighty stone fortress rises from the middle of the island and you can hear the sound of clashing weapons and shouting nearby as you look around you can see all of your fellows there you're stood together on the outskirts of this island at this point can Weimar and Anyone who's been to the Witch Isle, make me an intelligence roll. Okay. So, as you all continue in this dream, as you look across the island towards the sounds of the battle, you see your old friend John Cameron standing there looking as he did in the prime of his life his rifle slung over his shoulder a small few bits of dirt and blood besmirching his otherwise pristine clothing as he he looks at you all and he sort of he raises his eyebrows as he sees you he looks at Malcolm and with a sort of slight smirk on his face he looks at uh, Weimar and Leopold and he says uh, so this is my replacement is it oh well it, 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 it's different now it doesn't really matter and besides we, we don't have much time 
This island it is a sacred place. The dead have been buried here for many hundreds of years, and the knights built their fortress here, and he gestures at the stone fortress. The knights stayed here as protectors of the dead, but when they were wrongly accused of helping the Senna bring about the Ice Age, and they were put to death, their spirits couldn't rest. During the days of the Great Exodus, a mad Valconan mage who had witnessed his family killed by the mob came here, bringing with him forgotten and ancient lore of shadows. He used this lore to preserve himself beyond death and began summoning a horde of vengeful spirits and creatures to take revenge on the world that had taken so much for him. Stirred by these evil acts, the Knights of Solaris rose from their grave and called out to the dead across the land, rallying them to fight against the mage. Each night they rise and the battle is renewed. The knights and their legions, and he gestures at himself, hold the mage and his minions on the island. But with the exodus and so few people perishing here, the legions of the knights have grown sparse. Each night the battle goes more heavily against us. And should we fall, then the mage will be free to leave the island and take his revenge. He looks around him as though he's like surveying the island and in a sad voice he says gods it it must have been beautiful back then and as he says this the skin begins to fall off his body until there's little more than a, a skeleton stood in front of you and the island itself seems to decay at rapid speed the fortress falling into ruin the the plant life dying and a mist rising from the ground until in your dream you once more stand on Witch Isle and through the dim fog you can hear the sounds of battle and you see dead man pitched against dead man fighting with each other across the breadth of the island and through the middle of them stride these figures that some of you have glimpsed these undead warrior knights. And then the dream starts to fade. And Leopold, you're like, <coughs> and you sort of wake up, still sat on the log, and you see the, the first rays of the sun rising above the horizon. And as you quickly look around, probably to make sure that no one's seen you sleeping on watch, you see that both Leopold, both are. Uh, Malcolm and Weimar have also sort of like sat upright in their like bedding and sort of woke up at the same time. I um I look at him. Hmm. Just had the strangest dream. Why are you awake? Hmm. Why are you awake, Weimar? You just Sprung awake, the pair of you. Give me quite the start. I... I think we need to go to the witch's isle. What makes you say that? I had a dream and your companion spoke to me. Hmm. What about you, Weimar? Did you have a dream? As it happens, I did. Mm, as did I. I confess, I may have nodded off momentarily. Well, that's not the interesting part, I think. I think the interesting part is we, we all had the same dream. Cameron? Question mark. Yep. Which aisle? Battles? Undead? Well, we were heading that way anyway. Well, you've been there, Weimar. I've been there. I'm not looking forward to going back. And as Weimar says, I'm not looking forward to going back. That is where we fade out for this session. <laughs> and we conclude this session of our OSE Smoke and Snow campaign. Thank you very much for playing, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the session. Yeah, yeah man. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, that was fun. And 
obviously I'm happy to chat for a bit and we'll sort out XP momentarily but for now I'm going to stop the stream so thanks for anyone who's watched this like I say we're we're still sort of finding a way around the the sort of foundry VTT but I, I thought it worked pretty well to be honest yeah it's cool I'm impressed yeah, it's good. excellent so thank you again to my wonderful players and to anyone who's watching this in the future hopefully we'll catch you soon take care so long <laughs>